Okay, so good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to our live class. And today we are going to talk about we are going to talk about introduction to characteristic patterns. And so we are going to talk about the introductory aspect to candlesticks. And um, candlesticks plays an integral role in trading in the global financial market. So before you could have a better understanding about what candlesticks are, you need to, um, I mean, about being profitable in trading in the global financial market, you need to understand the basics of what of candlestick patterns. You need to understand the basics of candlestick pattern. You need to understand how you can interpret the entry of a price with what with candlesticks. So that is what we are going to do today. And um, if you have any question as usual, kindly uh, put it in the comment section so you can get started. Okay, so uh, like we all know, the candlestick chart it, it, it's a, a form of uh, is a component in trading where it gives us full information about trading. So we are not going to take much time today because we are going to talk about the introductory aspect, the types of candlesticks, the uh, open and close. The, the prices, the shadows, the body, and every other information we need to know about candlestick pattern. Okay, so let's talk about a brief history about candlesticks. What you're seeing on my screen, so what you're seeing on my screen is a uh, candlestick chart. So this chart is believed to be developed, you know, in the 18th century by Monisa Omar. So the man, the man in this, uh, the image in this slide is believed to be Monisa Omar, who has been a Japanese rice trader in the future market. And you can see that um, Japan has been what they've been developing for years. Yes, so they've been a developed country for years. So that is why. Their currency is being added into the global financial market. So, we, as you can see, also we have two types of candlesticks. We have the bullish candle and the bearish candle. So, this is what we are seeing. Now, why are they called a bullish candle? Why are they called a bullish candle? They call the bullish candle due to the attacking nature of a bull. They are called a bullish candle due to the attacking nature of a bull. We all know that. If a bull wants to attack, what it does is what it takes you from the bottom and throws you at the, uh, to the top with his horn. So he fights with his head and he throws you from the bottom and you know uses his head to throw you up. That is the attack nature for the bull, and that is um, the behavior of the attacking nature of the bull is what we see as what as the behavioral attitude of the war of price. So when price store opens from the bottom and close at the top, so we, so we anticipate that it is a bullish, well, it is a bullish kind of pattern, which means the price is going up. Now, when I'm talking about bearish, bearish, you know, bearish is being, is, is, is coined from the attacking nature of a bear. So it's coming from the attacking nature of a bear. And you know that if a bear wants to attack you, bear is an animal, it's a very dangerous animal that if it wants to attack you, it takes you from the top and pin you down, it throws you to the bottom and start attacking you. So, so it throws you from the bottom and what and start attacking you. So that is how we can see that um, the attacking nature of a what of a bear. So it means that price is opening at the top and closing at the bottom. So the, the bottom line is that when you any price opens at the lower um, price and closes at a higher price, we call that kind of candlestick the what a bullish candlestick pattern. I mean a bullish candle. And when it's you know when it closes from the when it opens at the top and closes to the bottom, which means the price is coming down, we call it a bear, a bearish Candle. Okay, so these are the two types of candlestick pattern that we have in trading. Now, what is a candlestick? A candlestick is a graphical representation of global market activities as it is being controlled by the forces of supply and demand. So, in the morning, you know, sorry, um, few classes we've been we've been told that trading is based on what on law of supply and demand. And when you're talking about supply, supply means sellers, which means the activities of the world of the sellers. So supply means the activities of the sellers. And when you're talking about demand, 
we all know that demand means what activities of the work of the buyer so we can also note that candlesticks is the one is graphical representation so it means you representing it in a in a graph or in a bar like this so this they are what all this you're seeing they are prices movement from up to what to down now it's basically the graphical representation of algorithm data of the market so the algorithm so it tells you all what the price is doing from the beginning to the to, to the end so it tells you the algorithm data of the market and it's used to predict future direction of price movement yes so when we see price like this so we predict the future direction of the work of the price movement so that is example of what that is the field definition of what a candlesticks now let's talk about historical footprints of candlesticks so let's let's talk about the field history of candlesticks because when we, when we are talking about the candlesticks we need to understand the field information the field knowledge the field history about candlesticks let me tell you something candlesticks is a universal language it's something we all need to understand when it comes to trading in the global financial market. So the Japanese candlesticks charting and technique is one of the most effective ways to read price movements in the financial market. So the methodology so-called because of its similarity to a candle has been developed over the centuries in Asia. So what is this telling? What is the first paragraph telling us? The first paragraph is telling us the history of the work of the Japanese candle stick. So it started, it tells, it tells us that it started from the West, from the Eastern Asia, that is from the Eastern Asia. So it was originally used in Japan during the Edo period from the 1603 to the 1868 period. So to monitor and forecast price movements of the country's most priced commodity price, which was mostly traded at the Dojima Rice Exchange, near the historical commercial capital. So it's telling us that it has been in existence since the 16th century, since 1603 to 1868. Wow. So you see that how you see how strong it was. Now, widely based on military tactics of the of the time, Japanese candlesticks techniques have provided traders with an edge long before bar and point figure chart while evolving into a compelling strategy for today's fast and volatile market. So why do we need to use Japanese candlesticks? Just three reasons. So we need to understand the reasons why we need to understand or why we need to use Japanese candlesticks. So one is for visual dynamics. So Japanese candlesticks are more clear. Um, Japanese candlesticks are more clear more clear, visual, and pleasing to the eye than other chatting tools, offering anyone from the first time user to a seasoned professional an extra perspective of price movement and emotional health of the chosen market. This can be used to evaluate. This can be used to evaluate the market perception of underlying fundamentals. So, what are they telling you? It tells us that um, the, the, the basic summary of the first point is that it gives us good visual representation. So, good visual representation. The second is the precision timing. So, Japanese candlesticks act as a unique indicator, producing the superior timing for entry and exit. So, with this kind of candlesticks, you will know when to enter. And the kind of, let's say, for example, in a bullish trend, you know, when you are seeing a bullish candle, or sorry, in a, in, in a bullish trend, a price gets to a support area, you know, you, you have to enter at its support. When you see a bullish candlestick pattern and a bearish trend when price gets to resistance here you enter when you see a bearish candlestick pattern so this is just you know i i, I mean I, when price gets to resistance exactly so this you see you enter a cell when you see a what a bearish candlesticks work candlesticks pattern so these are examples now it also enhances technical analysis technique so candlesticks pattern also helps you it helps your technical analysis so japanese candlesticks complement most of the technical analysis technique that you may already be using from, from traditional trend pattern momentum analysis to more sophisticated Ichimoku Kenko EO, the mark indicators, market profile analysis. This is simply because candlesticks are used in the four trading cycle points, which is the open, the high, the close, and the low. So all this tells you that with candlestick analysis, it helps your technical analysis.
So you'll be able to see the kind of candlestick that has formed in the past, or probably in relative, relative or related needs to a particular uh, a, a particular indicator. You'll be able to see the kind of candlestick that has been what that has happened in the past and the one that is going to happen in what in the future. So these are examples of what of what we need to to know about uh, the reason why you need to use candlestick. So candlestick chart. So this is just the other an anatomy of the candlestick chart. We have the highest price, the open price, the close price, and lowest price. So, and um, don't forget that uh, the the market is what is 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 plotted with price against. I mean price against time. So candlestick chart are one of the most common forms of price chart. Each candlestick communicates four important prices of information. So there are four things that are very important in trading with the candlesticks. It gives you the open price, the close price, the highest price, and the lowest price over a particular time frame. So another example of it, another um, use of these candlesticks is because it gives you what? It gives you the, the, the four prices that you need to know in the particular what, in the particular time, time frame. So candlesticks, let's talk about candlesticks. Okay, so let's talk about the prices. Now, when we are talking about the prices, we are talking about the high. So the highest price. So a candlestick has a high. The top price at which a candlestick has reached is called a high. So let's talk about the high. The high, the high is a record of the highest price reached at the time frame from the opening to the closing of a specific time frame. Example, for charts with five minute time frame, high price means the highest price of the corresponding five minute chart. So what I would say, we are saying that candlestick pattern, when price has reached that, the, the, the high is the highest price at which the price has reached in a particular time frame. So when you see this high, it, it means that, and this candlestick has closed. So it means that this is the highest point it's reached and in a particular in a particular time frame. Now let's talk about the other prices. Do you talk about the high? Now this is the low. So this is the low. The low is the record of lowest price reached at the time frame from the opening to the closing of a specific time frame. So what are we saying? We are saying that these candlesticks, these candlesticks, they are these candlesticks. What they do basically, it's they are being streamlined according to time frames, according to what, according to time frame. So this is the time at which it is what uh, the, the low means is the lowest price at which the price has uh, the, the price has reached before the closing of a candle at that specific time frame. Now let's talk about the open price. The opening or the initial price of a specific time frame, for example. For a chart with five minute time frame, the first open price of the current, the first open price of the current time frame is two is two point zero zero. This means that the open price of for a, this means that the open price for the current time frame is what is two point what two point zero zero zero. So opening price is the first price at which the currency could portray. In a what in that particular time frame. Now let's talk about the closing price. The closing price is the last price, which is the ending price. That is, if a candlestick opens at 2.0000 and it, it, after five minutes, it closes as 2.0050. This means that the closing price is what 2.0050. Now you can now say the, you can now note the type of candlesticks that it is, if it's a bullish candle and a what and a bearish candle. Now let's talk about candlestick construction. If you have any question, just type on the on the chat. Now let's talk about what candlestick construction. So when we are talking about candlestick construction, now we have uh, let's talk about it. a bullish or a white candlestick implies that the price of that the closing price of the session was higher than the opening price. That was what we discussed earlier. That the, work, that the closing price was higher than the one that the opening price. This means that the buyers maintain control and prices maintain control and prices spend more time pushing higher. So what it means that in an in for a bullish candle, a green or a white candle, whatever it is, or your chart. So whatever it is on your chart, a bullish candle. 
which means for you to identify a bullish candle, you need to know the opening price and the close price. So the opening price has to be lower. So when, let's say the price, let me post, let's go to uh, uh, what, our white screen. Let's go to white screen. Um, okay, let me share the whiteboard. So I will explain, I will explain it for us all, okay? So let me go to the white spot. Okay, now for a candlesticks, oh, sorry, let me use a, Now, for we to identify candlesticks, we need, now for we to identify the type of candlesticks pattern, we need to, to know exactly, we need to know exactly the type of candles. Okay, so we need to know the, where the candle opens and where it what closes. That is the first price and the, the, uh, the last price. Now, let me explain this. So if we see that, okay, so this is the first price, we have something like this, like this. We have something like this. So let's say uh, this is the opening price. So this is the opening price, it's, um, it's price opens at two Naira. So two Naira and closes at four Naira. So what kind of candlesticks is this? So when we see that in this particular time frame on five minutes, this is the opening price. Two Naira is the what is the opening, is the opening price. Okay, so two Naira is the opening price. Then it closes at what? At four Naira. So definitely we know that this type of candle is a what? Is a bullish, is a bullish what? Is a bullish candle. Okay. So this type of candle is a bullish candle. Why? Because it opens low. The, the opening price, the first price is lower than the closing price. So it means the price what? It goes up. So it is a bullish candle. Then a bearish candle is the opposite. So a bearish candle is when we have the opening price to be four naira and the closing price to be what? Two naira. So we have the open. Okay, so let me choose a text around here. The opening price. And we also have the what? We also have the closing. So when we have this scenario, so we have it at the back of our mind, that if the price opening at four naira and closes at two naira, it means the price has gone down. So it means that this candlestick is a what? Is a bearish candle. So let me write it below. Uh, let me let me write it below. So we have this place is called the what? The bullish candle. And here we have the what? Bearish candle. So we have the bullish candle and we have the what the bearish candle. So these are examples of what of of a candlesticks construct construction. Okay, that is good. So now let's go back to our slide, and we continue from where we stop. So as you can see as well, that let's talk about the the real body. Now the real body is the rectangular section of the candlesticks. It is called the, 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 the real body. It's the range between the open session and the closed session. The real body represents overall commitment in the market and what Japanese can describe as the essence of the market psychology. So what we are talking about the real body is the distance between the open price and the closed price. So if you want to know uh, um, the candlesticks pattern very well, you need to identify the, you need to take note of the strength of the what of the body and the shadow. So you need to compare the body and the shadows together. So you need to compare the body 
and the shadows together. So what is the body? The body is the distance between the open price and the closed price. That is the real body. So the distance between what? Between the open price and the closed price is the real is the real body. Okay. So let's let's talk about the shadows. Now the shadows, the shadow, the thin lines extending out from the bullish or a bearish real body are called the shadows. So we have the upper shadow and the lower shadow. They align the price exchange for the session. So shadow also tell us the momentum of the offset. So what is he saying? Now, you see that the, these thin lines, any thin line that you see that extend out of the body, they are called shadows. Some people call it weak, W-I-C-K. So those thin lines, they are called what? The shadow of the week. So we have the upper shadow and we have the what? The lower shadow. So after the, at the extreme of the upper shadow, we have the high. And at the extreme low of the low, lower shadow, we have the what? We have the low. Okay. So now let's 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 summarize this place. The bullish price is the bullish candlesticks is, is when the opening price is what is lower than the closing price. Okay. Now the bearish candlesticks. It's when the opening price is higher than the what that the closing price. Now, what is the real body? The real body is the distance between the opening price and the closing price. So that is the real body. The distance between the opening price and the what and the closing price. That's the real body. Now let's talk about the shadows or the weak. The shadows, this implies what the thin line that extends out of the body. So this thin line, this one, they are called the what. They are called the shadow or the wicks, W-I-C-K. Okay, so we have two type of shadow. We have the upper shadow, and we also have the what? We also have the lower shadow. So those are the two types of shadows that we have, the upper shadow and the lower shadow. Now let's talk about candlesticks formation. So in the beginning, we talk about, we have talked about the what the history of the candlesticks, what the candle is, the types of candle, bullish candles and bearish candle. We've talked about I talk about what candlesticks is. We talk about the history of the candlesticks, how candlesticks generated from Japan um, in the 16th century um, to from 1603 to 1804. We've also talked about we've also talked about um, the construction of candlesticks. Why we need to trade candles. We've talked about why we need to trade candles as well okay so now let's talk about we've talked about the four prices that we need to know the high the low the open and the work and the close so these are the things that we need to know about candlesticks and now we have candlestick work formations so these are the candlestick formations we have and we have the big white candle the big black candle the doji the dragonfly doji we have the hanging man the hammer inverted dharma we have the spinning top at all so we'll be talking about this kind of formation one after the word, one after the other. So we're talking about the candlestick formation, one after the other for our better word, better understanding. But before we go there deep, I would like us to take note of this something so that we can understand these candlesticks very, very well. The formation is very important. How big the body is and how small the body is and how longer or, or shorter the weeks is. So they will tell you the kind of candlesticks pattern we need to know. So let's talk about candlestick pattern every trader should know. So candlestick patterns indicate an opportunity within the market, especially when they are formed at support and what resistance areas. So what this means is that this indicates market when they are formed at support. And it tells us where candlesticks are formed. So when you see candlestick forming at the support in an uptrend, you see a candlestick pattern forming a support area, which is telling you that it's there is high tendency that market will work, we buy. And in a downtrend, when you see candlesticks forming at resistance area, it's telling you the high tendency that candlesticks will, will sell. Now, some provide insight into the balance between the buying and the pre selling pressure. So they provide insight into the balance between the buying and pressure pressure, while others identify continuation patterns or market indecision. So it is, I'm trying to tell you, or what we are trying to tell you is that this candlestick pattern, they depict market indecision and they also depict price what? Price continuation. Okay, so the first one we are talking about today is hammer. How many of us have seen an hammer before? So an hammer is the first candlestick pattern we need to know.
So a hammer is the first candlestick pattern we need to what uh, to know. So when you see a hammer, a uh, hammer is the first candlestick pattern we need to know. So let's talk about a hammer. Okay, so we have um, a hammer could be could end in a bullish or a bearish uh, or candle, but the formation is what is very important. That is, the first thing is they usually have a smaller body and a longer lower wick. So that's the first thing you need to see when you see a hammer. Now, where do we need to see a hammer and how do we trade a hammer? Now, a hammer is the candlestick pattern formed with a short body and a longer lower wick. So that was that was what I said earlier, that it is, it is a candlestick pattern formed with a, what? with a short body and a longer lower wick. So they usually have a small, so if they have a longer lower wick, so where would the body be? The body will be at the top. Okay, so the body will be at what at the top, and it's found at the bottom of a downtrend. So where the where we can find the uh, bottom of the downtrend is support area. So it means that hammer is the first candlestick that or hammer usually formed in the what in the support area. So when you see a candlestick pattern that is coming down, dropping, 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 and goes to a support area, and you see hammer trying to form. So this is telling you that at that present that there are buyers in that particular area now a hammer shows that although there were sellers pressure during the session but a strong buying pressure drove the price back up so the color of the body can vary but green hammers indicate a stronger bull market than red, red hammer so now what i would say in this third session uh in this third point it is we are saying that hammer that before the the beginning of that session price was coming down so sellers were what were strong but it got to a point before the end of that time frame buyers took over and pushed the market up and they did what they pushed the market up and that is why so and that is why we are having this um we are having a hammer formation so it means that price was coming down then it got to a point it started going up back up and pushes price up to a particular area okay so it pushes price up to a what to a particular uh, uh area before it closes forming a hammer okay so forming a hammer so that is an example of a hammer so let's look at hammer in the chart now how do we trade a hammer the first thing you see is when you see hammer in a support area we've discussed about support and resistance so when you see a hammer in a what in a support area we need to wait for a confirmation why because the body of the candle is small which means that there is no trend movement at that particular time at that particular session in lower time frame that there is no what trend movement so we need to wait for a uh, a confirmation candle which is a good bullish confirmation candle which is candlesticks that have a very good body a very good uh, uh body these are candlestick formation that have a very good body so these are they are called what confirmation candle so this when you see a hammer and a support area then you wait for a confirmation to occur so when you see a hammer in the support area, you wait for a confirmation to do what to occur, and the confirmation has to be a very good bullish candle, something like this. Once it closes above the support area, so it means that the support area cannot be broken. Then we have the what a hammer in what in place. Okay, so that is how to trade a hammer. So once the confirmation candle is bullish, then you now take of buying. So when you buy, when you buy the hammer, hammer good confirmation in the support area, it's telling you to what to buy. So when you buy that hammer, then you, your entry will be at the close of that good bullish confirmation. Then your stop loss will be below the hammer. So at that particular point in time, it tells you that you are moving what, alongside the what, the trend. So that is how you trade the hammer. The second uh, type of candlesticks is what is called the inverted hammer it's called what the inverted hammer you know we have a hammer we have what inverted hammer 
Now, the inverted hammer is the upside down version of the hammer and is found in a downtrend. So the upside down version of the hammer found in a downtrend is called the, the, the inverted hammer. So it means that we turn the hammer upside down. So we turn the hammer upside down. So it is called the inverted hammer. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. Uh, let me let me let me come slow a bit. But I hope you understand what hammer is. So if you know you understand hammer, please try to uh, let me know. Just type something in the comment section if you know you understand what hammer is. Okay. Okay, that's great. Okay, so let's talk about inverted AMA. So when we're talking about inverted AMA, inverted AMA is an upside down AMA. Okay, so inverted AMA is an upside down AMA. So when you turn an AMA upside down from, from the, um, from, from the you, you turning an AMA upside down in the, in the support area. So it found that it, it tells you that an inverted hammer is when an hammer is being formed or turned upside down. So it is usually found in a downtrend. So when we find an inverted hammer in a downtrend, it means it is found in a what? In a support region. So it shows buyer's presence in the seller's territory, creating a panic for the what? For the sellers. So it shows buyer's presence in the what? In the seller's territory. So an inverted hammer shows you a buyer's presence in the what? In the seller's territory. So a good bullish candle following the inverted hammer will be strong enough to drive the market back up as a com com confirmation candle. So what are we talking about in this inverted hammer? We are talking, we are saying that when you see a hammer that has been turned upside down, something like a hammer being turned upside down. So it means that they have a small lower body and a longer upper wick. A longer upper shadow and a small, small lower body. So with a good bullish confirmation, you can think of buying what you can think of buying the inverted hammer. Okay, so let's talk about hanging man. Hanging man is also another type of candlestick pattern that we need to know. So you can see that the hanging man even looks like a hammer. Yes, don't be confused. But the only difference is the where it is being located. Where we where we where they are formed. So the if you see a hammer candlesticks, a hammer light candlesticks that is forming in a support area, then you can say it is a hammer. Then with a very good bullish confirmation, bullish confirmation candle. What I mean by bullish confirmation candle is when you see that the next candle that formed after the hammer is a good bullish. That is the body is a big. The distance between the open and the close is big. Is much. So you know that okay at that point. The hammer, I mean, the hammer has been confirmed that you can take up buying. So, when we're talking of hanging man, now hanging man, it looks like a hammer, but it is formed in a resistance area that is at the top of the chart. So, it is formed in the what? In a resistance area. So, you can see the difference. The hammer is formed in the support area, resistance, um, hanging man is formed in the what? In a resistance area. So, how does it form when the price is going up? Then you see that a candle with a very small body and a longer lower wick is formed at the top of that bullish candle. So you wait for a bearish confirmation. What do I mean by a bearish confirmation? That is candlesticks that their price is coming down. Okay, so the, the next candlestick has to be a good bearish candle, which means the it's a sell off. So people call it a sell candle, which means the body has to be what has to be longer than the what or be bigger than the wick. So when you see a hanging man you see a confirmation that the confirmation has to be what? Bearish, okay? So the next thing you do, you tick of what? You tick of selling. So what do they mean? It indicates a selling pressure in the buyer's territory. So hanging, it indicates a what? Selling pressure in the buyer's territory. A good bearish candles following the hanging man will be strong enough to drive the market price down, serving as a what? Confirmation. Candle. So a good bearish candle following hanging man will be strong enough to drive the market down, serving as a what? Confirmation candle. So we also have a shooting star. If you can see the shooting star, the shooting star looks like an uh, inverted hammer. But what we see, the only difference is that one is found in the support area and the other is found in a what? In a resistance 
area. So when you see, so a uh, 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 that looks like an inverted amount in the resistance area, then you know it is a what? It is called a shooting star. Then a good bearish confirmation will confirm it. That is a very a very good candle. A good bearish candle will confirm the what? The shooting star. So it's it's as a small body and. A small lower body and a longer upper wick. So a shooting star has a what? Small lower body and a longer upper wick. So it's formed in an uptrend. So a shooting star is formed in a what? In an uptrend. Then it's in the case that there was a significant sell off during the session. So it tells you that at first the price was going up a bit. Then it's at first the price was going up a bit. Then it just fell off. That is, it started coming down. So what we are doing is, is that what we are saying is at that particular time, the bulls or the buyers were having strength, but before the end of that time frame, the sellers took over and pushed the price down. Now it's an indication that the bulls are losing the market, are losing control of the world at the market. So it means that the price has been going up to some extent. And at that point, bulls started losing control of the world of the market. Now we wait for the following candle to be a good sell candle before entering the sell trade. So when you see a shooting star, all you need to do, you need to wait for the confirmation candle. Now, let me explain something to you about this uh, candlesticks that has a small body and a longer wick. Some people call it pin bars, some people call it uh, uh, um, ranging candles. So it seems, it means that here we have a bull candle. So the buyers are strong, they are strong, but they got to this place. There is a battleground here. So when you see your hammer, your hanging man, your inverted man, it shows that at that particular point, there is a what? A battleground. You understand? So it shows that there is a battleground. All what you need to know. Do or you need you need to wait for the winner? We will win that battle in this area. So when price moves down to a support area, you see and you see a hammer or a, a, a an inverted hammer, then you know that oh, there is a what? There is a battleground in this region. So how what you need to do? You need to wait for the winner. So waiting for the winner means that you are waiting for a confirmation. You are waiting for a confirmation candles. Okay, so you are waiting for the confirmation candles. So. When you see a hammer or an inverted hammer in the in the support area, you wait for the confirmation candle. That is, you wait for the winner of that battle. Okay, so it means you wait for the winner of that particular battle. Now, let's go to the other currency patterns. The next one we have on my screen it's um the bullish engulfing candles. So these candles, you can see, it is just. Uh, uh, two different candles, a bearish candle and a bullish candle. So when you see that in this, uh, the first price, the first candle that formed was the bearish candle, and the next candle, which is a bullish candle, swallowed the bearish candle up. It swallowed the bearish candle up. They know it's an engulfing candle. So if the present candle is bigger, or twice, or one and a half times bigger than the previous, immediate previous candle, then we can call it an engulfing candle. So engulfing is a two is a two candle pattern that can signal major reversal at market extreme. So the signal what the signal major reversal at market extremes. So it indicates buying force in the seller's territory and an indication that price that the seller has lost control of the world, of the market. So this is telling us. Now, at this particular region, when we see this candlestick pattern, uh, when you see a bearish candle, and the next candle that forms a bullish candle, and it's over, it swallows up, or it's twice the bearish candle, then we can know that, oh, this candle is, what, is an engulfing candle. So this is an example. So how do you treat an engulfing candle? You put your entry at the top of the new engulfing candle, and your stop loss will be at the below of the new engulfing candle. Then you pick your trades. Okay, so they are always there at they are always pick at support area. So what we have so when we have bullish engulfing candles, 
It's telling us that um, the, the, and, and you see that this candle apples in the support area, then you can pick your word, you can pick your trade. Because the bullish engulfing candles in the support area, you can pick your word, you can pick your trade. Then bearish engulfing candles. How do you mean by bearish engulfing candles? So when we are talking of bearish engulfing candles, these are candlesticks that occur a resistance area. They occur a what? Resistance area. So when I'm saying bullish engulfing, bullish this, you should know that oh, this candle occurs in support area. But if you are listening bearish, bearish engulfing candle, bearish of this candle, then it's they are formed at a what? At a resistance area. So bearish engulfing candles are formed at a resistance area. So how do you know them? It's just the opposite of the bullish engulfing. They engulf. That is, this they are two times bigger than the previous candles. So when you see a candlestick pattern that is twice bigger than the previous candle, then you can say that what bearish engulfing what bearish engulfing candles. Okay. So all what you need to do is once you know that they are close below or they are two times bigger than the candle, you enter the trade and put a stop loss above your entry. Okay, so you put your stop loss above your candlestick. Sorry, so your 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 entry will be at the close of that engulfing candle in a resistance area. Then you put your stop loss there. So we have a um, piercing can piercing pattern. This piercing pattern, this is another form of engulfing candle. But the difference is that the piercing pattern will form will, will first open lower than the previous candle. You understand what I'm trying to say? That is the price will go from down, then go and close below 50% of the previous candle. So they close 50% of the previous bearish candle. So they are what they are called a uh, piercing candles. They are called piercing candles. So this is an example of a piercing candle. You see that they close 50%, even if they are not, um, they didn't go, but they close 50% of the previous candle. So they are called piercing candles. Now let's talk about that other one, which is the doji. So which is a doji? So doji in Japanese um, at the same means at the same time, they depict time frames when the closing price is the same or very nearly as the same as the open price. So what do how do you identify a doji? When you see a candlestick that does not have a body, or the body is closer, that is the open price is relatively closer or relatively close to the what to the closing price. So doji lines are among the most important individual candlesticks patterns, nice and explained, and can also be uh, be important component of other multiple candlesticks patterns. If a doji appears after an uptrend. And especially if it follows a long white bodied candle, it represents indecisions at a significant high at a time when bull should be decisive. It can also be read, read as a sign that supply and demand have reached equilibrium. Either way, it is seen as a warning that the uptrend is ending. If it appears and after a long decline, it's once the downtrend is what is ending. So, what are we saying? It say that doji. It means that doji depicts equilibrium. That is, there is no winner at that particular time. So when you see candlesticks that form like a plus, you see, or the long leg doji, that is, the long week is, the long upper week is on long, the lower week is long, but the body is relatively close to each other. Then we know that this is a what? This is the doji. So we have a dragonfly doji, and we have a gravestone doji. So these are examples of doji that we want. That we have. These are examples of doji that we, that we have. So we have bearish doji star. So now let's talk about this bearish doji star. You see that this is an uptrend, price is going up, then this was this doji form. So it means that there is a war, there's a battle between the buyers and the sellers, and there is no significant winner. So this kind of doji, and all you need to do, you need to wait for a confirmation, which is a bearish confirmation, most likely. And when you see a bearish confirmation around this region, Closing below this um, doji, then it tells you that what that at this point the sellers might take control of the of the market. Then we have bullish doji star. We have price coming down. The bullish doji star means what? Um, uh, price is coming down. Then a doji is formed. That is no winner. Then we expect a, 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 a bullish candlestick to form before price starts going up. So another type of candlestick formation we have is three inside up. So this three inside up is when we have 
me personally, I would say that this three inside hub is when we have a bearish candle and we have two is two bullish candle following the bearish candle in a support area. So the first one we close 50%, the second one we close above the bearish candle. So this is an example, like we see one and two. So with these two, this one, two, three. So these are three types of um, three um, candlestick patterns. So we have one, the, the, the long bearish candle, the first bullish candle that opens 50% and the other one closes above the long bearish candle. So with this is an example of three inside up. Then we also have what three inside down. So we have two, just a formation of two candles. This is a bullish candle, one bearish, and the other follows it. So this is an example of a what three inside down. So then another one we have is the evening star and the morning star. So the evening star and the what and the morning star. So the evening star is when we have a bullish candle, a bullish candle, then we have a doji or a spinning top at this top of the bullish candle. Then it closes with the bearish candle. The next confirmation candle is the bearish candle. Then we know that this is a what is called an evening star. Then we know that, oh, this kind of candle is called an evening star. So how does it work? A bullish candle confirmation, a, a star that is a sign, uh, a spinning top or a doji appears. Then the next candle is a bearish confirmation candle happening at the resistance area is called an evening star. So let's talk about it. In, in bearish, evening star, which follows an uptrend, the first candlestick is a long white body, the second is a small body, and the third has a long body. So the lower second, the lower shadow of the second candle could overlap the third candle's body. So what you're saying is that this bearish candle has to close below or we did this card, but well, this is a good bearish word, confirmation. So once you see this kind of candle, it is called an evening star. And when we have a bearish candle, a doji or a spinning top, you see that this candle has a small body and a long wick. So we, the next candle we wait for is a bullish confirmation candle. So when we see this kind of candle, it's called the morning star. So we have the evening star and also the morning star. So this, uh, this is just a cheat, cheat sheet about uh, candlesticks pattern that we need to know. We have a morning star, evening star. So when you see a morning star in the support area, we know it's a bullish movement that should proceed. Um, when you see, I mean, proceed, when you see, <clears throat> When you see an evening star at a resistance area, then we know that it's a bearish trend that's supposed to work, that's supposed to proceed. Now, when we're talking about three white soldiers, that is when we are when you are seeing three bullish candle, three bullish candle following themselves from a support area, then we know that it is a what a three white soldiers. Then three black crowds means when we see three bearish candle. Following each other from in a what in a from a resistance area, then we know that they are what three dark clouds. Okay, so I with this, I hope you've been able to understand few things about the candlesticks pattern because it plays an integral role in our trading. And the next class will be how to trade candlesticks pattern on support and resistance. So if you have any question, you can reach out to us on our WhatsApp group, on our YouTube page, or Facebook page, on all, or on all social media platforms. So we are all available except Twitter for now. So we are all available. And if you have any questions, this video will be shared to our YouTube page. So if you want to watch, you can watch again and again for better understanding. Thank you very much for your time. Um, have a nice day.